coming up. There was a big demand for beef in our community. We provide beef from farm to table. We believe it's the future. People want it. I think the demand is there and it's growing every day. We want to make sure that these cattle have a good day every day. Three ranching families are working to satisfy the demands for locally raised beef. Hear their stories next on The American Rancher. Hello, I'm Pam Minnick, and welcome to this special edition of The American Rancher. More and more consumers want to know the origin of their food. And that's why buying beef direct from a local ranch has exploded in popularity over the past few years. On today's show, we're on a road trip across the country to visit three ranches that sell home-raised beef farm to table. We'll meet the families who operate these ranches, learn about their ranching way of life, and show you how to order their locally sourced beef online. We begin with DeBrucker Charlet, a fourth generation ranching family in Dutton, Montana. Well, I'm Brett DeBrucker from DeBrucker Charlet in Montana, and I've been fortunate enough to grow up on a farm and a ranch and, and have been here my whole life. I started farming and ranching when I was about 16 and uh, part of our family operation, so, you know, really lucky to be in this business. We're in some of the most beautiful country in the world, especially in June and July when, when the wind's not blowing and it's really green out. Uh, we're right up here next to the Rocky Mountains. We've got a beautiful view of the Rocky Mountain front. I can't imagine a better place than uh, right here to raise my family in this business that I'm in. We're just family operation where uh, there's seven of us kids and there's about four or five of us that are directly involved in the everyday operations. And of course, if you want to expand the business, you need more people. And so it's kind of a synergistic approach uh, when you're trying to grow a family operation with having the next generation come be part of it. I've got quite a few nephews and nieces uh, that have some Charlet cows and, and uh, are interested in the business. So we've, we're real glad to have family wanting to continue on with what my mom and dad started. I guess maybe the easiest way to put it for the Bricker Charlets is you know, each family has their branch. I guess Brett has his, and Jackie has hers, and Mark, and Joe, and then us. Um, and then all the cattle need to, you know, they get graded and sorted and treated the same, so we all kind of have to raise good cattle from each of our individual ranches. So I'd fit in as one of the family operations. Um, my brother and I just run our operation um, about 20 miles north of where Brett and Mark are. Never get tired of this view though. Yeah, I guess it's cooler up here. It's a little shorter season. A lot of years it can uh, doesn't look like this come August and September. Or uh, all of a sudden September it turns completely white. Two years ago all of a sudden we had a September storm and there's four feet of snow and the cows are still up here hauling them hay. And uh, the last few years we have been getting a lot of timely rains and last year's cooler weather and it stayed green pretty much the whole time the cattle were up here. This uh, native pasture it seems to uh, really pack a punch and the calves gain really well on it. This would be our commercial herd that we breed to uh, to Brooker Charlet bulls. We brought them up last week so about the first week of June and keep getting some rains and hopefully they'll be up here till middle October and that's when we'll wean these calves. Running this black baldy cow Bread Charlet is the cross that we like the best, but also do Angus Bread Charlet. Calves seem to come out, you know, light birth weights, and they seem to just explode up here on this grass. And come fall, they're just a good growthy calf, and they go into the feed yards, and guys like them because a little bigger, I guess more daily gain. And the reason we use them is because, I don't know, they're just a good, good cross on our baldy and black cows. So in order to be a rancher, you got to take care of the land and, and the cattle. Frankly, 
If you're not operating a, a, a sustainable business, meaning taking care of the cattle and taking care of the rent, uh, you know, it's not going to take care of you and you're not going to be in business very long. So I tell my family and, and the guys that help us, I you know, kind of remind them every chance I get that, you know, we want to make sure that these cattle have a good day every day. Throughout their life cycle, you know, they're growing in some big pastures on some good green grass and, and uh, really have, a, you know, a pretty darn good life. Uh, when they get weaned from their mother, it can be a little stressful for a few days, you know, as anything. They're, they're leaving their mother's side, but, uh, you know, we take real good care of them, make sure they're vaccinated up well, and uh, usually they're just off and running. What the cattle do for us is they convert uh, an unconsumable for humans in grass into a high quality, nutritious protein in beef that, uh, for humans. We've got this beef program called the Brooker Charlet Meats. Uh, and we've got customers throughout the U.S. That have, that have bought beef from us, a lot of return customers. We've had a lot of very positive comments about it. Uh, you know, the, the, the beef is extremely tender and flavorful and uh, uh, really good to cook with. And you know, most people have just said, look, we really appreciate the beef you've got to offer us. So we're, we're very pleased with the customer reaction. We ship once a week. It's either on a Monday or a Tuesday. It can vary a little bit. You know, any orders processed, they get they go out once a week. So if you'd like to order some Debrica Charlet beef, you can go online at, at debricacharlet.com, or you can go to uh, buydcmeats.com, and you can get on our website there and order some beef from us. After the break, we believe it's the future. It, just from the notoriety, restaurants are picking it up. People want it. I think the demand is there and it's growing every day. We visit a ranch in Texas that raises and sells beef from one of the most popular cattle breeds in America. Stay with us. Welcome back to the American Rancher. Our next stop is Sulphur Springs, Texas where Marvin Garrett and his family operate G5 Cattle Company. Since he started the ranch, Marvin has relied on one breed of cattle, Wagyu, a breed that became a benchmark for high-end restaurants. Now Wagyu's popularity has exploded with beef lovers everywhere, and you can buy homegrown Wagyu beef direct from G5 Meats. I grew up on a rice farm in South Louisiana, helped my grandfather on his farm, harvesting rice, and taking care of his Angus cattle. All I knew was Angus. I'm an engineer. I worked in, uh, my whole career as an engineer. Love the outdoors, love animals. In preparing for retirement about 12 years ago, I started buying property out here around the Sulphur Springs area. I bought an Angus bred heifers. They calved out, didn't have a bull, Started asking around, what should I, can I AI? I didn't know anything about that. Champion Genetics helped me get some semen. It was Shikafuji TF-147. The reason I landed on Wagyu is I'd heard that it produced better quality beef, uh, better marbling, more tender. Uh, but this was, this was, you know, 10, 12 years ago. The Wagyu breed wasn't well known here in the United States. and I'm a risk taker. I said, okay, why not? Why not give it a try? What drove me to the Wagyu breed was this bull. This is a straw from Itushigafuji TF-147. Uh, he's the one I bred to my Angus cows, my original group that I bought. Um, when I put that in my freezer and tasted that beef from an F1 TF-147, the rest is history, and I love that breed. I think it's the future here in the U.S., and it's growing every day. We believe it's the future. It, just from the notoriety, restaurants are picking it up. You know, Arby's has a Wagyu hamburger. The information about the breed is really getting out there and how wonderful the meat is. The intermuscular fat of it is just not comparable to anything else, so people want it. I think the demand is there, and it's growing every day. 
2020, my sister and I built this website to start shipping, you know, started with just Texas and then added Louisiana, added a few states here and there, and then kind of went national. During COVID, we um, really kind of boomed. People needed beef. We were able to get our name out there, did some deliveries in Dallas, and um, made some pretty good headway. And so um, that was rocking and rolling. My sister's a photographer, she does beautiful work, so we were really fortunate there. And um, she took all of our pictures and made our website just beautiful. And we started in actually his shop out at the farm. And we were shipping out of there, and as that grew, we needed a, a little bit bigger facility. And so we're right here on 30 on the frontage road. So we built this place. We weren't really sure how that was gonna work out. It's been awesome with the help of my sister and pulling all my family members together. My kiddos come out and they help me. I, we decorated this place and got it up and running as a, as a real meat market. <laughs> Being centrally located, G5 ships Wagyu beef from North Texas to most locations in the continental U.S. So we have our ground zone, which won't be any more than two-day shipping. So anybody outside of a two-day ground area is our um, two-day air. All of these will arrive to our customers two days after we ship. This one's going to Everett, Washington. They ordered Wagyu bacon, four flat irons, uh, a couple of pounds of ground beef, and some 100% full blood New York strips. Since we started in 2020, and now we're halfway into 2022, I'd say we've doubled our business. Our customers love the specialty things. Beef bacon is one of our big, huge sellers. We do it from the short rib, smoked just like bacon, very similar to pork bacon, but it's beef, and it's delicious. A lot of the grilling cuts are um, picanhas and our tri-tips and things like that. Ribeyes, and of course, the prime steaks. You know, people love the prime steaks, but the ground beef. People won't go back to grocery store ground beef once they've tried, tried our Wagyu ground beef because it, you know, it makes a difference in, in your meals and in your cooking. We've got our, our ribeye that we cut, spinalis on the top. This is, this is our king. Everybody loves the ribeye. This is number one seller. People come in, go straight to the ribeye box and, and grab. We sell out in a week or so before we, when we get them in. They like to throw these on the smoke them, cook them all day long, so they like them thick as possible. We've got a couple of them. It's got the bone in. We cut the bone tail pretty short, but it's a bone in ribeye is what a cowboy ribeye is. We've got a tri-tip, which is marbles awesome. Really popular in California um, and has made its way to Texas quickly. <laughs> they, they fly off the shelf. And then we've got my dad's favorite cut, which he raves about. He makes me go back to these pictures every time. It's a picanha or a sirloin cap. So we've got a Denver steak um, cut from the chuck, but it's got a, it, well, it's got a lot of flavor. It's the most marbled cut we've got. I mean, you can see kind of the checkerboard marbling pattern in there, and it, oh my gosh, it just like butter. It's delicious. And it's really a little known cut. Not, not very many people have heard of it, and it's a real shame because it is, it is phenomenal. If I'm gonna pick a steak, I'm picking a Denver. Up next. You know who you're buying the, the beef from. So with that, I think there's a lot of customer satisfaction that comes from that. We're headed to Georgia, where one rancher has built a highly popular and sustainable farm-to-table beef operation from the ground up. That story is after the break, here on The American Rancher. Welcome back to The American Rancher. Our final stop is in Georgia, where entrepreneur Woody Folsom created an agricultural enterprise that continues to expand. Woody raises Brahmin purebred and crossbred cattle. And when he saw a need for a farm-to-table beef business in his hometown of Baxley, he stepped up to the plate and hit a home run. I was um, born and raised here in Baxley. I was the only child. My mom ran a convenience store, and my dad was a frozen fruit manager at um, Winn-Dixie. We had a little 50-acre farm and different types of row crop, and we always had cattle. Back then, my daddy was was really interested in Brahmin cattle. That's all, that's all he wanted to have was Brahmin cattle. Soon after graduating high school, Woody was hired as a new car salesman at a local dealership. It was there that his lifelong passion for entrepreneurialism began to flourish. In 1996, I bought my first Chevrolet dealership. 
And basically when, when I bought that dealership, I had to liquidate everything that I had was liquid. In 2001, I decided that I felt like I had everything going pretty good. So I purchased my first big farm, which a neighbor of mine had, it was 496 acres. So in 2001, we established Circle F Farms. But within a few years, Woody experienced a tragic event. 2013 was a tough year for me. Um, that's when my dad passed away. One day, I was sitting there and I got a phone call from my mama. She said, we got a check today that was your daddy's. And she said, I don't know what to do with it. She said, I don't need this money. And she said, I just want to give it to you and, and um, you know, put it in your business. And I said, um, I said, Mama, I said, I don't want to do that. I said, I know about that money. I said, I'd put that money up for Daddy a retirement. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, won't you just sleep on it tonight? So we met back together the next day. And um, I, when I come in there, I told her, I said, Mama, I come up with a great idea. I told her, I said, look here, Daddy loved Brahmin cattle. I said, let's take this money and buy some Brahmin cattle. And I said, that to be in honor of my daddy. I said, we'll put them here. So she said, she said, son, there's nothing in the world to make me more happier than you do that. She said, I love Brahmin just as much as your daddy did. And she said, um, let's do it. Woody would never be satisfied with having mediocre cattle that would not give his daddy the honor that he feels like he deserves. So, and, and Woody doesn't do anything halfway. Nothing in, nothing in life is halfway. It's go big or go home. In time, Woody expanded his Brahmin cattle business and Circle F Farms flourished. Each year, they sell some of the top purebred Brahmin and Brahmin-influenced cattle in the world. But he was far from calling it good. As it goes with Woody, good enough is never good enough. And he wanted to expand again by satisfying a growing demand. We opened the doors of Circle F Meats in May, May 21st of 2021. We decided, you know, there was a big demand for, for beef in, in our community. We provide beef from farm to table. We felt like people wanted to know where their beef came from. We grow everything, we process everything, and then we retail everything right here in, in Baxley, Georgia. We use quarter blood black and black body cows and breed Angus bulls. We like the Brahmin influence because of the heat tolerance and, you know, flies and stuff like that, you know, down here. We can, them, you know, they can handle it. Everything is um, raised here on the farm at Circle F. We make sure our cattle has plenty of country to travel. You know, we don't like them in, you know, boggy feedlots and such. You know, we let them have sh good shade and, and plenty of grass to eat and just don't feel like they shut up in a confined area. Our number one goal is make sure that everything we do is a top chef. This is our Circle F meat processing. This is where we process meat for um, our meat store, Circle F Meats, and also we process for the retail customer. It all starts right here. This is, this is our cooler, and this happens to be pork that we got in the freezer today. And we do do some lambs for customers if they request. And then also, all this over here is, is our homegrown, the Circle F Meats on this side here. Good morning, guys. We working on our Circle F homegrown beef this morning. And we're processing hamburger meat. We got our roast, our shoulder roast. And we got our brisket. We walk down here. We processing our chuck, chuck roast. Then we walk down here to the homegrown ribeyes. One thing that we really proud of is our Circle F fillets. We take a lot of pride in our custom beef. You know, we, we put extra work, extra time, and we, we put um, the best that we can do to provide 100% satisfaction for our customer. So, of course, home-raised cattle, uh, you know, er, there's a huge demand for that today, primarily because consumers want to know where their beef comes from. You know how those cattle were treated. Uh, you know who you're buying the, the beef from. So with that, I think there's a lot of customer satisfaction that comes from that. Our customer base has, um, you know, really grew, um, you know, probably, 
I would say it's probably doing three times to four times what we projected it to do. But, you know, we got people that travel within a 100-mile um, radius to do business with it at Circle F Meat. Every time we come through here, we make sure we have a cooler in the back of the truck so we can stop and get some of these good Circle F steaks. Hamburger meat is exceptional, too. We like it. Our butchers are highly skilled, so if, you're, if you want a particular cut of meat, they are happy to cut that. We offer marinated steaks. We offer wrapped or vacuum sealed steaks. Our goal is to make sure that our customers are 100% happy with the beef that they purchase and they know exactly where it comes from. Woody Folsom's known throughout the country uh, for his customer service and certainly that bleeds over from his car dealership into uh, the Circle F Farms. If you'd like to get custom beef, you know, we located in Baxley, Georgia, Circle F Meats. You know, we'd send directly to your home or our business. You're going to be able to order online year round and, you know, get it to you within two or three days. That's all the time we have today. We hope you enjoyed this special edition of The American Rancher. Beef is the center of the plate for millions of American families. And if you're a beef lover, we hope you'll reach out to one of our featured ranchers that's closest to you and order yours today. Their websites are listed below. And to find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook or YouTube. I'm Pam Minnick. For our entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.